Nowadays, people are talking more and more about mobile IP. Sure, IP we all know, but mobile IP? What exactly is that? Let's imagine that we are living in the old days. You know, the days where your grandparents were living in. Something as simple as sending a letter to your friend meant that you first had to write it, with a pen of course, then stick it in an envelope, and don't forget the stamp. Then you had to walk all the way to the post box to drop your letter there. Then this friendly postman will collect your letter, then deliver it to your friend. Oof, this must have been really frustrating thing to do. Not to mention that it takes forever. And the worst thing is that there is no guarantee that it will actually be delivered. If only there was a more helpful tool that can make life much more easier. Oh wait, there is. It's this magical thing called the internet. Now you can play your favorite games online, check out how to bake your favorite cake, and see if tomorrow weather will be sunny, or will it rain while you don't have an umbrella. This is all nice and pretty. I mean, internet really helped revolutionize our lives. But there is a dark side to it. There is all the technical stuff that makes the internet work. There is message exchange, security, verification, authentication, and many many other things that the user don't even realize. This is all done using what is called Internet Protocol, or IP, because we are all lazy to say its full name. And this has been working really good for us, at least for the last 20 years or so, when we still did not mind actually sitting still in front of a computer. But today, we can't afford this anymore. We now want to access the Internet from mobile devices, like smartphones, laptops, and tablets. That's why the good people in charge of research did what they do best. They researched and got a solution for this problem, introducing mobile IP. Mobile IP is simply the IP that allows the users to be free to move around. Or, if you are looking for a more formal definition, then it is the standard that allows user using mobile device whose IP is associated with one network to stay connected when moving to other networks. How fancy. But the people that created the IP forgot something important. They designed IP to be both the locator and the identifier of a node. And then they bind them together. But what mobile IP did is that it separated this binding. Before we continue, some introductions must be done first. Meet the mobile node, which is the device that moves from the home network to the foreign network. The home address, which is the permanent address of the mobile node. It is also the address of the mobile node in its original network. The home network, which is its original network that the mobile node was associated with before moving to a new network. The home agent. This guy is important. This is the node in the home network that is responsible for forwarding messages to the mobile node when it is outside the home network. The foreign network, which is the new network that the mobile node visits. The care of address, or the new address of the mobile node in the foreign network. The correspondent node, which is any node that tries to send messages to the mobile device when it is outside its home network. It is important to note that mobile IP must take into consideration two important things. Session continuity, meaning that the communication must flow without interruption, even while the mobile node is moving from its home network to the foreign network. Second, reachability meaning that communication must be possible wherever the mobile node is located. I mean, either in its home network or in the foreign network. While communication, things will get bad. 
when we split the locator and the identifier attributes of the IP, as some security and privacy issues may arise. The simplest of which that the corresponding node may know the new location of the mobile node. There is only one type of mobility. That's wrong. There are several. We have terminal mobility, which is when the host changes its point of attachment. Imagine a node associated with one access node, then it moves its association to another access point. There is network mobility, where the network changes its point of attachment. Think about a train that has Wi-Fi. The actual train is the network, and as it moves along the trail, it keeps changes its association. Session mobility is when a communication session is transferred from one device to the other. Imagine you are watching a movie on your smartphone, for example. And when you reach your home, you want to continue watching it on your TV. This is an example of session mobility. To help us understand how mobile IP actually works, we will take this example. This is the home network that has a home agent connected to it. Another network will act as a foreign network. And the third network will contain the corresponding node that will try to send messages to the mobile node initially connected with the home network. We will take a scenario in which the mobile node will move from the home network to the visited or foreign network. The corresponding node will try to send a message to the mobile node using the home address that it already knows. The message will be intercepted by the home agent, which will look up the new address of the mobile node in the new network or the care of address. The home agent will then encapsulate the message it just received and set the destination address to the mobile node's new care of address. The message will then be tunneled to the mobile node in its new location in the foreign network. And now we can say that we have reached the bottom of it. Next time someone asks you something related to mobile IP, you will be able to answer him.